everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. One of the great things about crochet is how mobile it is. The tools are small, the supplies are pretty light, and we're not always making a great big blanket, so chances are the project you're working on you could probably take with you wherever you might be going today. Well, you're going to need a bag for that, and tons of different project bags exist for a lot of different purposes. And chances are you've got an arm bag or something like it, or you've certainly seen these. And I wanted an arm project bag too, but we decided, like a lot of things we do here, that we wanted to make it do a few more things than just hang at the side of my body off my arm. One of the things we did about this bag that's a little different than some of the other ones you may have seen is that we made it more like a basket than a bag. So this is sturdy. We went with a two strand held together construction for a sturdier, stiffer fabric, a bit more like a basket. We even gave it seams so that if you do want to put it down, it'll sit open for you so you can see what's in your basket a little easier than digging around in a bag. Another nice thing that stiff fabric does is give you smaller spaces in between your stitches, so you're less likely to lose your supplies and your tools through the holes in your bag. We gave it nice wide straps. This will evenly disperse the weight of your bag over more space across your arm, which is nice for people like me who suffer from chronic pain due to arthritis, and it's also just a little more comfortable, and the weight of your bag is less likely to pull those little straps together, making it like you've got two small skinny straps burrowing a hole in the side of your arm. <laughs> I find wide straps much more comfortable. And I'm sure some of you have recognized that we have a couple of buttons here that button up the straps. And you may be wondering, well, what's the point? When it's obviously easy, you can just slip your arm through those two straps and off you go and start crocheting. Well, our arms are very busy and maybe you need your arms for your mobility. So if you are in a wheelchair or maybe you use a walker, you don't necessarily want to have a bag hanging off your arm. That can be a little bit cumbersome. So being able to unbutton the straps and rebutton them allows you to attach this bag to the side of your armchair or your walker. And another nice thing about that is when you finally park yourself and decide you're going to do a little bit of crochet, you don't have to have the bag on the floor, which would can be kind of awkward. You don't have to have it on your lap, which is taking up very necessary space that may be where you want to do your crocheting or maybe you just don't want to be feeling all sort of squished into your chair or your space it's nice to have your bag out of the way but within easy reach so there you go you can hang it off your arm you can hang it off your wheelchair your walker you can pretty much button this anywhere you need to to have it in a, a good sort of grabbable space to do a little crochet because that's really what it all, it's all about so Let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn. I've already got mine. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch it up together. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. In order to make our hanging project bags, you're going to want two strands each 250 yards of a size 4 medium weight yarn. I'm using acrylic, but you can use blends, cotton, wool, whatever you may like, but you want 250 yards each, two strands, because we're going to be using it two strands held together throughout. You want two stitch markers, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a couple of buttons, and a needle and thread to sew them on with, and I'm using a 7 millimeter hook you can also use a 6.5 millimeter hook in the US, that's known as a K or a 10.5. If you've got old hooks from the UK, they may say two or three, but a nice large hook for the two strands we're holding together throughout. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to take both our strands of yarn and we're going to hold them together. We're going to treat them as a single strand throughout. So we're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to chain 25 to begin. Once you have 25 chains, you're going to skip the first chain from the hook, that's this guy here, and you're going to half double crochet, again with both strands held together, into the second chain from the hook. And it's helpful sometimes when you're doing this to have two different colors so you can see that you're not missing any loops or any parts of a stitch. So you want to make sure you're getting both of those colors because together they are one stitch. So if you miss it every once in a while, it's okay. It's not going to fall apart, but you want to get your hook under both 
colors because our two strands held together is one strand of yarn. Half double crochet in every single chain all the way back and at the end of row one you'll have 24 very colorful thick stitches. At the end of row one you'll have 24 stitches and don't forget that when we're using the half double crochet stitch and we're only chaining one to turn your 24th stitch or the last stitch in the row will always kind of pull down the side a little bit so don't miss it when you're on your way back across. Every row ends with a chain one. We turn our work. You always skip the chain one because it's just your turning chain and you half double crochet into the first actual stitch half double crochet into each stitch all the way across and don't miss that last stitch at the end because it'll be pulled slightly down the edge of your fabric. You'll still have 24 stitches at the end of row two. At the end of row two you'll still have 24 stitches. Remember don't miss that last stitch. It wants to sort of curl down the edge a little bit. Chain one turn and for rows three to 39 you're going to just repeat half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. That will be 24 stitches per row. Chain one, turn, always skip the turning chain and half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. I'll see you at the end of row 39. All right, I've done 39 rows of half double crochet. Each row has 24 stitches. At the end of row 39 you can Snip both of your tails. Remember, together they equal one strand of yarn. Fasten off and take a moment to weave in those tails and also the tails at the very beginning. Once you've woven in your tails, you're going to count back 13 rows from row 39 and mark the 13th row with a stitch marker. And count 13 rows up from row one and mark the 13th row with a stitch marker. And that's going to give us three equal sections of 13 rows. Next, we're going to take our yarn and again, we're holding both of our yarn strands together. So this is double stranded all the way through. We're going to put a slip knot on our hook and you're going to select the row edge that's one after your first row marker or your first stitch row marker. So this would be the edge of say row 14. You're just going to jam your hook in the edge of it there and we're going to build a side right off of the edge of our initial piece of fabric. So we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. i move things around here for you chain one and you can get rid of that first stitch marker now and into that same place that you joined you're going to half double crochet. And that first one's always a little tight. Try to make sure you don't miss any of your loops. Okay here we go. You're going to work around 19 half double crochets along the edge of your piece of fabric right up until this marked stitch. So this marked row here you're actually going to put your last stitch on that row. So you're working across 13 full rows and I say 19 if it needs, if you need 20 or if you need 18 it doesn't really matter. You just want to evenly place your half double crochets. So just go ahead and work a half double crochet in the edge of Oh, every row, every every row and a half, however many you need. You don't want too many because you'll get a sort of ripply effect. You don't want too few because you'll pinch your work together. But the number of half double crochets you need to get a nice even sort of piece of fabric all the way across those 13 row ends is really up to you because all of our tension and our hooks and our yarn, it all differs a little bit. So there's no real fine science to this, just as many stitches as you need. Just make sure you write down that number because you want to do exactly the same thing on the other side. My last stitch, number 19, is going to be worked in the edge of that row that I had the stitch marker in. So I've worked across 
13 row edges and to get a nice even stitch I had about 19 I did have exactly 19 stitches across so from row edge 14 all the way across 13 row edges that's 19 stitches that's row one of this side chain one turn and now you're going to work half double crochet in every stitch across chain one turn at the end of every row and you want 13 rows in total so we've done one row that was our establishing row you want 12 more rows of half double crochet that's 13 rows total worked across the edge of those 13 rows from our main piece of fabric and every single row has the same stitch number in it so whatever your first rows stitch count was every single row will have the same stitch count and make note of that because you want to do exactly the same thing on the other side you can snip your yarn, fasten off, weave in your tails, and then go ahead and mark off those 13 rows exactly as we did for the previous side on the opposite side. So you can also make sure that it lines up perfectly like this, and then repeat this exactly right here. Once you've finished your other side, so it's exactly the same as the one directly opposite it, Instead of fastening off the end of row 13, you're not, you're actually going to start to seam up your edges. So you're going to grab the top edge of the piece right next to it, so that would naturally kind of come together with the top of that last row of your little piece here. So it doesn't matter if you're working left or right handed, it's whatever, whatever end is closest, you're gonna pair up those edges Either way, you're going to have exactly 13 row edges on one side and 13 row edges on the other. And paired up, they will evenly fit together. We're going to chain one. And now we're going to single crochet through both edges at the same time to create a nice solid seam down the edge. So if you've got nice tight fabric like me, then you might have to sort of do this one little piece at a time. So I'm going to pick up a piece on one side and reach across and pick up a piece on the other. I'm going to pick up a loop. And again, if I have to do this one little piece at a time, I will. So there's my loop and single crochet. The first stitch is often the hardest. Let's do another one. I'm going to skewer both pieces of fabric. So side one and side two are both on my hook there. I'm going to pick up a loop and single crochet. And again, I'm keeping my stitches fairly tight. I want to have a nice sort of snug seam running down the edge here. And there's no rule about how many single crochet you need to run down the side. Just make sure, kind of like we did with the two middle pieces, that it's even. Try not to split your yarn. But however many single crochet you run down this seam, you're going to try and do that for all four seams because there are four seams to do. So just work away at picking up pieces of both sides. Try not to skewer your yarn. <laughs> You're going to single crochet through both sides all the way down to the bottom. When you get down to the bottom, take a moment to make sure there are no gaps and you didn't accidentally miss a side while you were stitching. And wherever you put your last single crochet, you're going to slip your hook through the exact same place and slip stitch. And that's just going to sort of make the tail end of that stitchery disappear. So slip stitch into the same place that you put your last single crochet, snip your yarn, fasten off, and you can weave in your tails. We've got three more seams to do. It's the same thing. You're just going to close the short ends of those sides together. Grab your yarn, and remember we're still using two strands held together. We start with a slip knot. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch through both 
pieces. So I'm going to grab the top slip stitch, I should say the top stitches, whether it's a foundation chain or an actual top of a stitch from the sides. I'm going to put my hook through under, underneath both of them and then I'm going to join my yarn with a slip stitch. There we go, nice and tight. And then I'm going to single crochet through both edges again all the way down this side, making sure I get both sides as I'm single crocheting. And I'm going to attempt to work the exact same number of single crochets that I did for the previous seam. So it doesn't matter, like I said, how many stitches that is. You just want it to look even, and then you want to try and use the exact same number for all four seams so that it all, it all looks the same in the end. And then you're going to repeat that all the way down. You're going to slip stitch into the same place where you work your last single crochet, fasten off, weave in your ends, and then complete your other two seams in the exact same fashion. Once you've crocheted all four of your seams closed, you'll have a nice rectangular basket shape and it should sit open nicely on your work desk. That is the whole point of nice stiff fabric and tight stitching. That's why we want to use two strands held together because this stiff fabric basket will now sit open, which also makes working out of it a lot easier and you'll be able to see everything sitting inside. All right, let's make a couple of handles. We're going to build our straps directly onto the wide side of our bag and we're going to build them off of row 39 or what was row 39 in our original piece of fabric. So you're going to grab your yarn now and remember we're still holding both of our yarns together. Let's pair them up. We're going to make a slip knot on our hook. And you're going to take your bag and it doesn't matter whether you're working from the right or the left, it's going to be exactly the same no matter which way you're going. You're going to count three stitches in from the corner and join your yarn in the fourth stitch. Join with a slip stitch, chain one, half double crochet in the same place that you joined. I always have to do this in pieces, that first one. There we go. And then you're going to half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So our straps are going to be six stitches across. And there we go. That's six half double crochet. That's row one of our strap. And just like every other row we've done, you're going to chain one, turn the whole thing around, and you're going to work 12 more rows of half double crochet in each stitch. Chain one, turn at the end of every row. And our straps will be 13 rows long. Each row will be six stitches long. That's 13 rows at six stitches across, and that's the bulk of the strap done. But now we want to create a little end that allows us to button it on to the other side of our basket or bag. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to half double crochet in the first two stitches. Chain two, skip two stitches, and half double crochet in the last two stitches. And whenever I come off of chains, I always have to sort of do my half double crochet with a bit of thought. <laughs> and we get that last stitch in the row, which is always sort of curved down the edge. And there's our little buttonhole. Chain one turn. You're going to half double crochet in the first two stitches. Half 
half double crochet in each of those chains. So there were two of them. Make sure you get them both. There we go. And half double crochet in each of the last two stitches as well. So you still have six stitches across. There we go. So there's our little buttonhole. That'll fit around our button. And we're just going to curve the edge of our strap just to make it look kind of nice. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to switch to single crochet now. We're going to single crochet the first two stitches together. So you're just pulling up a loop in each of those first two stitches. Single crochet the second two stitches together and single crochet the last two stitches together. So you're single crocheting two stitches together three times. And that just rounds out the bottom edge ever so nicely. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off. You can weave in your tail now or later, but let's get to that second strap. In order to make our second strap, which is identical to the first, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Put your hook down for a second. And from the bottom edge of your first strap, you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six stitches, find the next one, and join your yarn with a slip stitch to it. And proceed exactly as for the first strap. So chain one, half double crochet in the same stitch as joining. You're going to half double crochet in each of the next five stitches so that your strap is six stitches wide, just like the other one. And that will leave you with three unworked stitches on the other side. So you'll have two evenly spaced straps, both six stitches wide. Remember to chain one turn at the end of every row. You want your strap to be 13 rows before you put that little buttonhole and that neat little rounded corner edge on it. So basically make your second strap exactly the way you made your first. There'll be six stitches unworked in between and three on either side. We're going to sew our two buttons on now and the buttons are sewn onto the top row here along the top edge directly opposite your two straps and the buttonholes and it's really easy to figure out where to put your button. You are going to count in one, two, three chains or stitches, whatever happens to be there. For me these are the foundation chains so that's the three that equals the space on the opposite side between the edge and the strap. So one, two, three, four, five, the first two stitches of the strap, and six and seven, these are the two stitches in front of which I'm going to sew my button. And I'm going to sew my button right to the middle of this top row so that the little bit sort of sticks up at the top. I've taken my thread, I've pulled it together, the two ends together, and knotted it. And I'm just going to loop my needle underneath a bit of that yarn right at the front and loop my needle through the two bits of thread to make sure it's locked into place. And then I'm just going to sew my button on as normal. Now I've got a four hole button. It doesn't matter if you have a four hole or a two hole button. What matters is that it's nice and large or it's pretty and it's going to allow your straps to stay locked down when they're on. So these are about an inch and a half in diameter. Nice plastic buttons, nothing fancy, nothing too heavy. And you're just going to sew your button all the way through the fabric, back and forth and back and forth as many times as you feel it's necessary because you want your button to be on there nice and sturdily. So sturdy sturdy, that's the name of the game here. Once you've sewn your button on as many times as you think you require, you can just make a simple little knot on the back 
I like to loop my needle underneath a bit of thread, try not to poke yourself, <laughs> and then pick up the loops of the thread with your needle. Do it twice. Sometimes I'll go in from behind. Really, really playing a thread chicken here. <laughs> and then I'll just weave my needle through a bunch of stitches, careful not to poke myself, just sort of weaving my thread in, trim what's left, put my pin or my needle here back in a very safe place. I'm using a little pin cushion. It's always good to put your needle in a safe place once you're done sewing because you don't want it to go amiss and end up stepping on it later. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. So you can count into stitches seven, uh, five and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven are the two stitches. So count in five, find six and seven and stitch your button right onto the front of those two stitches. And you'll find that your straps line up perfectly. So there you go. An arm project bag that you can easily slip over your arm or button over the arm of your wheelchair or your walker or whatever device you might feel is more comfortable and accessible than your arm is. It's sturdy, it's lightweight, it's pretty, it's fun made out of a couple of different colors of yarn so you can have a lot of fun mixing your colors together and it's definitely more like a basket than a bag which just makes it really handy to put down if you need to and search around inside of it. I love my new arm bag. I hope you guys enjoyed making this project along with us and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Till then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye everybody! Hi everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!